Everyone is Jordan, the Millionaire Millennial, and today I'm sitting down with Mr. Baird Hall. Hey, Baird, how you doing? Hey, Jordan, thanks for having me. You bet. Baird has uh, founded a lot of different startups over the past few years, and we're going to sit down and talk about his startups. Uh, one of his first ones that is still running today that's successful is Wave, and also Subtitle, and his newest startup, Duplicate, which actually I'm personally really excited about because it'll actually do a lot of the stuff that I need to have done. So. <laughs> Uh, I actually found Baird by um, using one of his tools. So Zubtitle was a tool that I actually needed. And uh, once I found out that he was the founder, I reached out to him. I was like, dude, we got to sit down and uh, we got we to gotta have a talk about uh, all of this kind of stuff. So Baird, I just got, I got some questions for you. Uh, you know, I just want to roll, roll right into. Um, so first off, can you just give us a little bit of background on you personally? Um, you know, not necessarily from a business sense, but like where you're at in life, you know, how things are going, what got you into entrepreneurship from the, from the get go. I always just had that knack. I'm sure a lot of people watching this can, um, relate to that. Just always had just that in the back of my head, knowing that I wanted to do my own thing. I didn't really know why back then, but, um, I live in Charleston, South Carolina and, um, and uh, just had a seven-month-old, uh, I've got a seven-month-old baby girl, which Congrats. has been quite the adjustment as an entrepreneur, now dad. Um, but uh, I'm from a small town in Kentucky as a terrible student. I was like a, you know, C plus, B minus student, um, didn't really like school, um, went to community college, played baseball, and uh, was a communications major, which uh, was just kind of a catch-all uh, degree at the time. But I, I really got lucky moving to Charleston. And I started working for a tech company here and that's where I got into, I started my first job was doing customer support, like on the front phone lines uh, with people that were on hold for like 30 minutes and trying to figure out this complex CRM software. So I really lucked out just getting in, into tech um, back in 2010. So uh, it's been um, almost 10 years now and that's where I got started. And then I moved into sales with a startup here in town got really lucky there too, um, took a risk with a start that was like their ninth employee and, um, they were still really trying to figure things out. And I joined as one of the first salespeople there and did sales and support and a little bit of everything and got my feet wet, uh, with that Worked for them for five years and then left to start my own company. Um, so that's, I guess that's the high, the, the yeah, quick, the, quick the, background, <laughs> the high level overview. Yeah. I always find it funny, you know, uh, sitting down to do like a podcast or a video with someone and just trying to condense 10 years worth of experience and journey <laughs> yeah. into like this 30 minute segment, you know, so that's always, always challenging to do. Um, but so you, you left your, you know, sales job. Uh, so your background is kind of in sales and tech and you left that to do your first startup. What was, what was your first startup? <laughs> The, this was 2015, my business partner, uh, who I was introduced to by my wife, uh, my wife and his wife are best friends and have been oh, friends nice. for a long time. And he was in law school and I was working for this tech startup traveling a lot. So we didn't really know each other, but our wives were just listening to us talk about our business yeah, ideas yeah, yeah. and all these startup ideas. And they were finally like, you all just go to Starbucks <laughs> and get out of here. Uh, and it worked out really well because we hit it off and uh, we started meeting up every month. But um, the first company that we started was called uh, Utalk. And it was a uh, the best way to describe it is we were trying to build a Reddit based on audio. So communities where people would join channels and through a mobile app, they would record uh, up to a minute of audio about certain topics like politics, sports, uh, anything they were interested in. And then other people could listen and comment back. And it created this kind of Reddit type thread. And it was definitely like a consumer play um, startup. We tried to raise money and we worked on it for like a year and a half, almost two years. And we were just wait. Well, it, there was no business idea behind it. It was just a product and it was a cool consumer app that we really wanted to get going. That's what everybody was doing back then. They were mm -hmm. trying to build, still trying to build social apps back in, you know, 2014, 2015. And we uh, ran out of money eventually and did everything incorrectly, never raised any money. Um, we wound up selling it to um, a group out of the Northeast that um, did some live streaming stuff and wanted to add it to their, the product to their portfolio. We didn't make any money on this deal at all. It was a huge time and money sink. Um, so anyway, that was, yeah, it, it, 
it was really painful and I thought the world was going to end and I thought I was a complete failure and it was just, I was a mess. But like, it, like it was affecting my personal life too. Cause I <clears throat> cared so much about it. And, um, <clears throat> turns out it was the best thing for that first to finally shut that thing down. And, uh, we moved on to wave, which is our first company or our next company that turned out to be uh, a great idea and worked out really well. So, yeah. uh, it was painful, but, um, in hindsight, I'm really glad we did it because we just we got started and w it was in the audio space and we still work in like audio, video, media processing type um, work now. So it kind of just helped us get started, find a path and um, get introduced to a lot of different problems out there to solve. For sure. And I think people like forget <clears throat> like, yeah, you know, the first business was a failure uh, in, in monetary sense. But you, t like you said, you're still in the audio space. You learned a ton of stuff, I'm sure, that is applicable to the businesses you're doing now. So, you know, you can't downplay the uh, the very first business because I'm still, you know, like my first business was uh, selling on stuff on Amazon, right? So, yeah. like, I've done a lot of different stuff over the past, like, four or five years. Um, and so you can't you can't downplay the, the, first, the first one, so for sure. Yeah, I think, um, I, I think... When I was getting into entrepreneurship, and I think a lot of others probably struggle with this too, there's so much pressure on that first idea or that first thing that you're going to do. When in reality, mm -hmm. you should just get get started. Yeah. Like, just write a blog or you know start creating content about this whatever you're interested in. Um, and looking back to if we did this kind of accidentally, but we picked kind of um, an industry or a space. I guess we were really interested in people that are creating content, like content creators. Um, like yourself, we really like helping people that want to have conversations like this, or they want to talk about, uh, you know, any subject they're interested in and, and put it on social media. Those are the people we want to help. And we've had, so, there's a never ending list of business ideas just within that specific lane. So um, I think, you know, if I was giving advice to somebody that wants to get started and they're like, you know, waffling on their first idea or whatever, I'd be like, you know, don't worry so much about the idea, worry about the next five to 10 years of your life. And who are the people that you want to help or what are the companies that you want to work with? Or do you want to do blockchain or finance or whatever? Um, you know, you got to be interested in it. That's more important than the first actual business idea. Um, at, at least that, that's what's worked for us. And I think that takes the pressure off for some people it might help. Yeah, it does. Cause if you're working on something that you actually enjoy, then it's, I mean, yes, it's work, but at least you <clears throat> are enjoying it. You know, it's better than like, yeah. I, I uh, went to college for engineering. And then I worked in the engineering field for only like six months before I quit to start my first business. And it's like, you know, that wasn't like, it's fun and I enjoy engineering, but it wasn't necessarily like the stuff I want to be doing. So it's important to yeah. definitely pick something that you like from the get go. And like you said, just start making content about it. Start talking about it. Start talking to other people that are doing it too. And mm -hmm. just having conversations with people. I think that's a great place to start. And then the product will kind of make sense. It reminds me of, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is <clears throat> Rand Fishkin, the founder of Moz. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. kind of the same thing. You know, he was just like had this blog and then it kind of turned into, okay, I'm gonna make some software. And now it's this, you know, huge mm -hmm. thing. of course he, I think he left to go do something else, but you know, that that's aside the point. <laughs> yeah. So wave, um, really interested about wave because it was your first successful wink, wink company, yep. <laughs> uh, that's still operating. So, yeah, like I said, I, I found you on Indie Hackers and I actually listened to uh, the podcast they did with you. Uh, oh, nice, thanks. And, and you were talking about getting your very first customers. And I thought it was so interesting yeah. that you just were just emailing people. So, so is that really what you did for several months was just like shoot like dozens of emails every yeah. day to just it was a grind. podcasters? Yeah, it was a grind. So the, the it, another interesting aspect of this is that old company that failed. It was like that social audio um, app that we built. We actually had a big problem when we were trying to grow that that product. We wanted to take these audio clips that people were making and put them on social media, put them on Facebook, put them on Instagram to help promote it. And we realized you can't do that. You can't put an MP3 on Facebook. You have to link it to something else. And so we were like, well, let's just turn it into a video and then we can put it up there. And podcasters started looking at the videos that we were making and they were like, I, we don't really care about this app, but how did you do that? How did you make that video? And then we we're like, damn, the light, bulb light bulb appears. just went off. <laughs> yeah. And then um, so once we built that first product, yeah, I was just going on um, 
I'd actually just pull up a podcaster's RSS feed. So I go on Twitter. I had this thread where I was searching for any tweets that said new episode. Um, and it would basically just be this huge list of people that are talking about their new episode that they launched, uh, their new podcast episode. I would go to the podcast, grab the RSS link, um, and then their email is in the RSS link. Almost every podcaster has their personal email there. Yep. And then I would just send them an email like, hey, I saw you release a new episode and you're talking about it on Twitter. Have you thought about you know, doing a little video clip and putting it on Twitter? And people would respond and be interested and we would just start the conversation from there. I think we, man, I think like the first 250 customers were, all, all, there was some type of like onboard happening. Like maybe not all of those people, I, I, I didn't um, acquire via cold email, but we talked to them by email or had some type of communication to help them get set up. So it was a very manual process, um, which was painful too, but we learned so much. Like when you actually, even just chat support with customers while they're mm -hmm. getting set up, you figure out what they actually want. Um, you know, they you get feature requests, figure out what's slowing them down and, that first year of business, it grew really slow. I think it took us like, I don't, I can't even, I look back at our revenue sometimes and like after, I can't believe we were still working on it because after like 14 months, we were making maybe $8,000 a month, which mm -hmm. we had two people trying to get this thing full time and we weren't even close to that. Yeah. Um, so, but we just, you know, it's that SaaS snowball is really nice once you finally get it there and it just kind of keeps going and it's still growing today. It's been out, uh, will be four years in January. So, um, it's done really well. Yeah. I think that's the, the key takeaway is like, even when you think that you're, you're not going anywhere, like you just got to wait a little longer, maybe. I think yeah. that that's a hard decision though. Cause you know, you, you walked away from your first SaaS and so mm -hmm. maybe at this point in wave, you're like you know, should I stick with it? Should I walk away? So yeah, I'm sure that was a kind of difficult decision. Yeah. And our goal was really the whole time. Our goal with wave was we just wanted to pay our mortgages. So we're like, how yeah. cool would it be if we had this, this product that made enough to uh, help us pay our mortgages. So we hit that point kind of set the next bar up like, okay, well maybe we can like, you know, have a part-time salary on this. And we kept, even though the month over month growth was usually between like six and 12%, um, which is pretty high, but starting from zero, it takes a long time mm -hmm. to get to anything meaningful. Yep. But every month it would just go up a little bit and it kept going up into the right. So we kept working on it and we did some freelancing to pay the bills. And eventually it got to a point where um, we could start reinvesting in it and, uh, you know, hiring developers, things like that. And so it just got easier as it goes. But Man, it's an uphill climb. Even sub duplicates, the new one that I'm mm -hmm. creating, and I'm just remembering all over again, like, oh, starting something from scratch. Are you doing so... uh, cold email for duplicate again? Yep. Nice. Yeah, we've done some. We've uh, we're a little uh, luckier this time to have a built-in audience that of base, yeah. kind of yeah. So we know who to reach out to, and we've done some email blast um, with our other companies. But uh, yeah, we definitely have been reaching out to some of the usual suspects and having them try it out. So. Nice. Uh, man, you know, starting anything from scratch, getting attention to it and getting first customers is tough, but, um, I guess that's, yeah. <laughs> so I it mean, makes it I, rewarding when you I've can pull it a, off a full-time employee that does what duplicate does. And so I'm just like, all right, well, mm. I'm about to try it out. So nice. Yeah. We could do this too. one. That'd be a good first, uh, test yeah, run. There you go. There you go. That's very, that's actually pretty possible. Um, so, you know, your, your email and these, these, you know, podcasters directly. Mm -hmm. If you remember, what was like the conversation, like the back and forth that led to like one of your very first customers? Like how many back and forths were there? What, what were there? Like, what did they say to you? What'd you say back to them? Like what, how did that conversation go? The first, so I, I thought a lot about cold email and I did sales before uh, starting wave too. So I, I had some experience with cold emailing. And I, I definitely have a method for it. And the, the first thing that I did is my first email. The reason a lot of us hate cold email is because we get these massive emails that mm -hmm. say like, hey, I found you, you know, however, here's our product. Here's what it does. Here's how it's going to save you time and money. And it's just canned and it feels yeah, gross. And, you know, go. yeah, and it just it's not that's not an effective way to do it. So um, my approach is my first email is personalized and it's just simply to get a conversation started because if the person doesn't even want to talk to you about their specific problem then you're not going to sell them anything so why even bother so the first email would be like hey you know I, you know i saw um 
you launched a new podcast and you know, what do you, how are you sharing it on social media? Cause genuinely I'm interested cause I'm trying to build a product for these people. And if they're not even posting on Instagram or trying to share it on social media, then why would I even build this thing? So the first question is just to ask them like to validate, is there even a need there and to make it sound genuine. Uh, so I'd email and say, you know, how are you currently promoting on social media? And they would, a lot of people would res respond. I think if you're intimidated by cold email, uh, it's probably just because you're thinking about doing it the spammy way. Mm -hmm. If you do it the other way where you're just interested in helping people, you'll find that people love being helped. Like we love being listened to. We love being attended to. Mm -hmm. And if somebody can solve my problems, then I'm going to be interested. So if you approach it the right way. So a lot of people would respond and be like, you know, here's the different things that I'm doing. And then I would ask them, you know, well, have you thought about doing creating videos and, and you know, turning clips into videos? And I would lose people kind of, you know, like a funnel almost um, lose some people at that step. But I don't know, one out of 10 probably would actually, um, you know, sign up and try it. And um, we would I'm not exactly sure what the conversion rates were, but it usually took two emails to get them to try it. And then maybe they'd have one more question before they converted. Um, but it was pretty quick back and forth, very short emails. There was, there was no you know, SaaS products, especially these days are pretty much self-service. Um, mm -hmm. so there wasn't a lot of, um, no contract yeah, or anything like that that we had to get had in place or something. Yeah. Nice. So, so you got wave off the ground. What, what's your current acquisition strategy? I'm assuming you're not cold emailing people anymore. So no, now we're all, doing, um, and stuff. Yeah, content marketing is really big and SEO. We're lucky in that Wave creates content that goes on social media mm -hmm. and it creates word of mouth. We kind of really focused on creating unique style of videos so that when it was shared, it would look a lot different than our competitors. So when people ask, what is that? Uh, we don't put watermarks on our videos uh, since people are paying for it. But we've tried to almost kind of get around that by making our animations and text styling and things like that very unique um so that's really helped with word of mouth marketing and we do adwords facebook ads have been interesting um it's a challenge to like get those right but sometimes they work sometimes they don't um and um yeah a lot of content people finding us through we write about podcasting and yep. social media and things like that so um those are the the main acquisition channels right now and it's been crazy with COVID and just everybody on quarantine, everybody's starting podcasts. Mm -hmm. So it's been yep. really busy, right place, right time. And having all that um, content out there has really helped. For sure. For sure. And, and that's, uh, you know, I'm assuming you kind of did the same thing with subtitle because that's exactly how I found subtitle was SEO. And, and I was searching for, yep. it's like, how can I caption my Instagram videos? And it's like, <laughs> I spent all the, I actually the this morning, I was, was like, how to caption your Instagram videos. That's it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. I spent two hours this morning working on our um, AdWords campaigns that um, seem to have changed for some reason, but um, yeah, SEO and Google, if you can figure that out and get, especially if you can get on the front page, front search page of a popular topic like that, you yeah. can really do wonders for, um, for acquisition. Yeah. That's uh, that's the same strategy. I went with uh, my first SaaS. I uh, had a, uh, it was called Atlas. It was like an inventory management software for Amazon sellers. And we did, oh, nice. we did the same thing. We, we made some blogs that targeted like the exact keywords. Like if you're searching for this, you're ready to buy something from us, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's definitely a very powerful method. It just takes a long time. You know, it took like six months. Yeah, it does. Ranked appropriately. That was actually working. Yeah. And I, I just for anyone out there that feels intimidated by SEO, I'm still not I'm no SEO expert. Um, I'm sure it's a rabbit hole you can go down. It's just like anything else. You can, you know, almost learn too much about it to where you don't even get anything done. But the best advice I have for people like, A, just get started. Just start writing blog posts and put them out there. But most importantly, just put yourself in the shoes of your customer or potential customer and just think about what would they be typing into Google and then go type that into Google and see what comes up and write articles around those topics. Uh, try to find old posts that you can make better, like from competitors or people that have already written them, um, things like that. Don't overthink it or don't be paralyzed because it's intimidating because it's just writing and just write to help people. And, um, it'll kind of take care of itself. Yep. Or, you can make videos and have them converted into yeah. blog posts using duplicate. There, now we're talking. Yeah. So <laughs> I can help you with that. Exactly. And so, so speaking of duplicate, that's your third 
SaaS. That's yeah, we just started it. I'm not sure exactly why we feel like we want to, uh, we must, I think we're just addicted at this point. It's like every two years where we, for, oh, I got to fire some uh, up. I, yeah. I actually had a neighbor that was telling me, this is kind of random, but he was telling me about, they just had their third kid. And he's like, yeah, man, it's interesting. After three years, you forget how hard a newborn is. It kind of leaves your head. So you're like, let's just do it again. And that's what's happening with us with companies. I think it's like every two to three years, we're like forgetting how hard it was. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so again, um, I think the main lesson here, and I hope this one works, it might not, um, but we're just, we're staying in our same space. We're helping content creators and we know that a lot of podcasters and video creators uh, are looking for ways, it takes a lot of effort to create a podcast. Like, you know, it's this time for both of us and, you know, you'll have editing and all these things. If you're going to create this really nice piece of audio or video content, why not reuse it in different ways? Um, so we're building a tool. Uh, it's going to start out as a podcast and video to blog converter. So repurposing content um, to your blog. So we're going to have, it's going to transcribe it, clean it up, um, help it get SEO ready. And um, it'll, it'll do some fancy things to like, you know, remove filler words that I've probably been saying a lot of and yeah. identifying speakers, things like that. So um, that's the latest idea. And um, something, a lesson that we learned, um, of our previous two companies is that our idea usually isn't the best. So it's better to just let your customers tell you what to do. So instead of actually the first idea before this was like, we're going to build this content engine where you can upload one video, split it into multiple videos, turn it into a podcast. We were going to do like this massive, um, basically content repurposing engine. And we, instead of starting to build that, we put out a website that we did this for people as a service. So it was like $6 a pop. Um, and we're still doing some of this now where people would just send us the video and we would do it for them. Mm, yeah. And we started converting it and like doing this manual process for people. And then we started learning like what we can do, what we can't do, what people will pay for. So we actually, after, you know, dozens of customers paying us, found out that really the podcast and video to blog was the real core thing that they wanted. So we scrapped everything else and we're just focusing on that. Yeah, um, that's exactly so it was really helpful. Use, so. <laughs> yeah, that's good to hear. So yeah, it was a good, um, it was another good lesson of, Hey, we had this great idea. That's going to be amazing. Probably not, but let's just put out a really simple uh, version of it first, the easiest way to get started and let's learn from people and adjust from there. Um, I think people get really married to their ideas. We almost get like romantic with them or like emotional mm -hmm. with our ideas and we power them, power them through as opposed to the way we try to approach it is um, we have an idea. We put something out there as quickly as possible and it's no longer ours. Like we separate ourselves from it and say like, let's let this thing become whatever it's going to do um, and shut it down if we need to or do whatever. Um, but let the customers actually drive it. And um, I, I think that's really been the biggest thing for us, for my, me and my partners is just that idea of not feeling, um, taking away like, like this is our idea that has to work exactly how we want it. And just rather being flexible and adjusting and making decisions quickly. And um, that's been the biggest turning point for us. Wow. Yeah. I, I think that that's really hard for, for people starting out is you're right you get this idea and you're like this is the idea I'm yeah do i did it i yeah. i wasted two years on it because i was like no this app is the coolest thing and i think it's ever gonna will, happen you know i think everybody you just have to make that mistake of of, of doing yeah. that because I, I was reading uh it was a post from i think one of the founders of y combinator and he was saying at the beginning do stuff that doesn't scale because nowadays people yeah. are always thinking about scaling. It's like, oh, how can I scale this? Or how can I build this giant mm -hmm. system? It's like, no, maybe you just need to do what you guys are doing with Duplicate and just have your user upload a video to you and you just manually do it just to make sure yep. that A, the market exists, B, that people want it, and they're going to use it in the way that you think they're going to use it because odds are they probably won't, you know. They want it. Yep. They want to use yeah, it exactly. for something else, you know. So, uh, but yeah, I definitely I agree with what you're saying. That's That's a very important aspect. Um, but yeah, I think, um, it too, it's, I I've never been the, I always admit that I'm just, I've never the smartest guy in the room. And I, it's almost been like an advantage to where I'm not even, I'm just like, well, let's just try it. Let's just see what happens. Um, I don't need to have all the answers right now because I never have in the, I never have the right answers. Mm -hmm. So we'll yep. just, you know, put just... it out there, get feedback and move forward. I think, you know, uh, 
I've got some friend entrepreneur friends that are much higher 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 level of intelligence and sometimes they almost like get in the weeds they get and they never way, get sure yeah they get yeah they just like think too much and they're uh contemplating different options and avenues and like man i could have done all three of those avenues by this time and tested them all out if yeah. you had just got started yeah i call that the so, curse of entrepreneurship yeah, is you, you see opportunity yeah. everywhere and so it's hard to like focus mm -hmm. on one particular thing one of my friends he said to be a successful entrepreneur you have to be like uh, dumb enough to actually take a massive risk, but you have to be smart enough to pull it off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's like a good way to put it. That's what I'm trying to say. Summarize uh, it. Cause this is like, yeah, I fall right in that. Yeah. That you can't little, be like super smart balance. because then you think you're right all the time and that you're going to like stick yep. to something. And yeah. So yeah, you're not very flexible at that point for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be willing to practice humility and drop the ego. Cause yes. it's going to get, if you really care about your ego, it's going to get, busted up by early customers and maybe that's and, a good thing and then from there you can yeah. move forward you know so if you, if you have yep. an ego it will get destroyed so don't worry about it yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i i gotta ask you know three businesses it it seems much so how, how are you balancing this i mean how are you <laughs> like how much time are you spending on each per day i mean you also have a wife you have a, a kid you know i'm assuming you have friends and hobbies like what yep. what is the balance how do you do that um well, it, it's not it's not as bad as it sounds because we spent two years on each business. Well, duplicates just getting started, but you know, Wave had two years where we were dedicated to it, and then once it was up and going, we're able to bring in contractors to help run the business. Um, I very much and same thing with Subtitle. Uh, it was it was very heavy hands on for about a year, year and a half, and then we start growing to a point where we can start delegating more. Um, but I spend. Um, I'm much, I'm much more out of the weeds now. Like I'm not writing blog posts. I'm not, I did do a work on our AdWords campaign this morning. I should probably hire somebody to do that too. Um, cause they'd be, be better at it. But, um, so, uh, really now I'm very much removed. I'm not doing a lot of the actual work. I'm more just coordinating and making a lot of decisions. Um, that's the other thing for any entrepreneurs out there. Like you just have to, like the strongest skill you can have is decision-making. And I feel like that's really all I do all day now is answer questions and make decisions about which way we're going to go, um, where to put resources, where to try to cut resources, um, things like that. So um, I really work from nine to two every day, just about uh, 830 to 830 to one, something in that range. So I, I found that really four hours of like really focused, important work is about the max I can do in a day. Now, I I'll do a lot of admin stuff in the afternoon or, or late at night, but. Um, really just, um, spend two hours on wave, two hours on subtitle, and then we're trying to get duplicate. That's been a kind of a late night project as of late. So, um, it's a little easier now once you get, put the work in and get the business yeah. up and going and you can delegate some things out. Um, you can kind of, uh, not have to work 40 yeah, hours a week exactly. and still keep things moving. Yeah. I, I feel that I, uh, you know, I, I read, uh, you know, I'm sure, well, not sure, but have you read the book Flow by uh, Mahalo? No, I haven't. And I cannot, cannot pronounce last name, but <laughs> it's all about like how kind of we only have like a, a finite amount of focus per day. And it's mm, like, it's, yeah. like, it's like four or five hours, you know? So I always scoff at the idea of like these really long work days because I find myself going in circles after about five hours, you know? Yeah. I just, uh, I'm like work, I'm like, working against my past self really sometimes you know, yeah like reverting things yeah definitely I have done so diminishing returns yeah, for sure exactly exactly so uh, last question here and then we'll, we'll close it out I'm, I'm curious if you've ever thought about exiting either wave or subtitle or together or are you planning to, to grow them more uh we have thought about it um we spent a lot of time talking about it towards the end of last year mm -hmm. um so we have um four five partners total now across all three businesses. And, um, we've talked about it a lot and we came to the conclusion that, uh, it's wave is, you know, we've been working on it four years and it's gone from the startup stage to now more needing operators, people that are really more scientific. It, it probably will be ready. It will be time to move from that in the next year or two. Um, 
but I think I haven't really said this out loud, so I'm having a hard time formulating it. But the conclusion we came to is basically like we love starting new companies and we love that startup phase. Yeah. Once it turns into more that operational scientific approach of, mm-hmm. you know, for us, like with Wave, if we can optimize churn by a half a percent, it makes a big difference. That's not the stuff we like to do. Mm-hmm. We don't, you know, we don't, we're not specialists um, in any specific area. Um, so I, I think that's kind of the natural life cycle of these companies. And when they move in that phase, we'll be ready to exit ex- or want to exit them. Um, and we actually um, have tried with Wave. Um, I wouldn't say tried, but we've it kind of um, tested the waters, I would say. Mm, see um, if there's any interest. So, yeah. Yeah. And we have, um, I mean, we want to get duplicate off the ground. Um, we also have another, we want to move into more B2B SaaS products, um, hopefully late this year or next year we'll start a new company we've got some concepts that we want to test out um, so there's more stuff that we want to do so yeah i think we would um the goal will be to exit or find somebody that can run them efficiently yeah. and kind of you know get them out from under sure. um out from under us For as sure, far as yeah. operations go yeah uh you know i was looking at because you have all your revenue posted on uh, indie hackers i was like adding up i'm like they could exit for a cool few million, I think, you know, like, yeah, I think if, you, we, if you did both of them yeah. together, subtitle and wave, I'm like, that's pretty good right there. Yeah. We, yeah. If we, and maybe that's a long-term play for us too, is to actually bring them all together under the same house mm-hmm. or have somebody buy them and do that. Yeah, um, kind of create yeah. like an Adobe light type thing with mm-hmm. um, some different products would definitely be an option. Um, yeah, we actually, like I said, we tested the waters and thought about it. I'm glad we didn't because we've been growing like crazy this year with both yeah. companies. Yeah, um, sure. But now we're kind of, we've got the cash flow to do interesting things. So I don't know if we'll be rushing it anytime soon. Um, it's tough to think, you know, even just making the decision to talk to uh, potential acquirers and work with brokers and have those meetings was a um, definitely like a, a, a lot of, thought and discussion and trying to figure out, well, what do we actually want for these businesses? What do we want, you know, out of our next five to 10 years of entrepreneurship and of life, you know, you got wives and wives and families that play into this too. So, yeah, um, sure. yeah, it's never, never cut and dry, but it's so important. And I'm so lucky and blessed to have just good partners to work with that we can, get on a meeting and make massive life decisions in 30 minutes. And like, we'll talk through everything and we'll all come to a conclusion. Um, everybody communicates really well and make sure that they, um, you know, we make sure that we're all listened and valued and all those things. So, um, those, those difficult decisions become a lot easier when you have good partners. I could only imagine if, uh, uh, we've lucky, luckily had no problems, but you know, you hear horror stories from people that, Yep. You know, one person can really throw a wrench in everything. Mm-hmm. So be careful and, you know, work with people that you trust. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I exited uh, my first SaaS just uh, a couple months ago. So I, I Oh, nice. Congrats. Thank you. It's uh, it's a headache and a half. Uh, the, the paperwork alone is not fun. I so, bet. So <laughs> yeah. Was it a personal, um, the was it an individual that purchased it or was it a group? It was, a, uh, it was um, actually two guys together. So it wasn't okay. necessarily a group, but it was like the, it was, it was actually three. Uh, one of them is just a passive investor that kind of fronted a lot of the money. Yeah. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, they just acquired it. And, and, uh, right now it's kind of migrating over to them and I'm still helping a little bit. They brought me on as like an advisor. Uh, they pay me pretty well to be an advisor on my own business. Which nice. Is cool. Um, that sounds like the way to go is maybe yeah. spend like six months or something doing the transition and yep, then yep. work exactly on, uh, work is. on something new. That's exactly what's nice. going on. So they have me for actually six months, um, to, uh, help them kind of make sure they understand everything and, and they're, yeah. gonna, they're, their plans to scale it and, uh, then sell it again. So nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, so anyways, that's, that's all I got for you, Baird. I, I really appreciate cool. you coming on here and chatting with me. It's been a lot of fun, really interesting uh some of these answers you've given me pretty pretty interesting so i really yeah thanks it. hopefully it was hopefully there's some helpful tidbits in there for others that are getting started and um yeah check us out we you could just search wave it's wave with two v's i'm sure you'll put all this in the description oh, yeah, sure. um at wave and subtitle and then duplicates the new tool if anybody out there is wanting to turn a podcast or a blog into a video yep. please uh reach out to us and help us test it out and learn what we need to build and um also yeah if, if i'm always happy to uh 
you know, look at projects or help people with cold emailing, just, uh, I'm not hard to, hard to track down. You can find me and, um, my personal email is out there. And if you want to find me, I'm sure you can. Yep. I, I, I did. And I, I'm excited to try a duplicate, uh, for probably this podcast right here. So yeah, let's do it. Yeah. I'll, <laughs> um, yeah, we'll, we'll catch up after this and cool. we'll get it, uh, converted. It'd be helpful. Sounds awesome. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks. Bye.